You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today, man, we have an old friend to the show on I Am Refocused Radio. We're going to be going back to Bravo Zulu today and talking to Riley Davidson. And I just want to say first, good morning. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. I'm doing very well. Thank you, Shamaya. I want to have you back on because you have some updates. A lot of things are happening on your show, Bravo Zulu. You can go to bravozuluradio.com. And you have some news for us, man. So first... What's going on in your world? Things are going great. The The program is going excellent. Uh, I've had some a very exciting guests on of, of late. One of the uh, most recent, uh, Cindy Simmons, gave a uh, just a poignant and very detailed and, and heartfelt conversation with regard to addiction and, and her addiction counseling um, to just a really neat thing. Then uh, I had Mike McIver on who wanted to uh, share uh, to really highlight his father and, and grandfather even uh, for their uh, you know, legacy of service that they passed on to him. And so that was a very, um, very interesting, uh, if to say the least, uh, program. And so I'm sure, I'm hoping that Robert Sinclair from Sinclair Media had a chance to listen to that because uh, Lanny McIver had some uh, some old stories to share with regard to their time of trouble when they were when they were kids in Alamo Heights, but yeah, the the program's going excellent. I had and you mentioned uh, the interview that I just did with Rockstar Radio. That's going to go out nationwide. Very excited about that. Uh, uh, Bill Nye, uh, excellent um, excellent uh, radio host, and so very excited about that. I'll be putting that on my show as well. And then I just got off the. Um, a, a commercial shoot mm-hmm. uh, down from the Riverwalk, and we were doing some uh, some commercials that go out social media and what have you uh, for the radio program, and to highlight the fact that um, I'm now doing uh, speech training nice. for people. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, so I, I really enjoy it. So, man, let's dive into this speech training. Like, okay. that's very interesting. So, what does all that entail, and how does that work? Well, um, I'm one of, so I'm a graduate of, of Spokesman Club, graduate of Toastmasters. I was the public relations, uh, vice president of public relations for Toastmasters out at the uh, the insurance company. And I just recently graduated. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Roger Love, and, and he's a uh, voice trainer to the stars and has been for decades. And, you know, about a decade ago, he got into public speaking where he was teaching, he started, he recognized the things that he was teaching some of the, some of the, you know, the top artists that you could think of in terms of music. Uh, He, uh, that's who he was training. And he recognized the fact he had so many people coming to him, asking him if they could help him, uh, that he could help them with public speaking. And he recognized the fact that many of the things that he was teaching the stars uh, for their voices when singing uh, could then be translated into public speaking. And so I'm uh, one of the, believe it or not, one of the very first students of his very first Roger Love Method certified speaking course. And uh, it wasn't cheap, but uh, but I went through it and, and very grateful that I did. And so now I'm able to take you know, what I learned from him in terms of voice manipulation. In other words, he actually has the, the science training to help people change their actual voice. Mm-hmm. And then on, on top of that, then I help people with uh, whatever it is with the, the media portion of it, uh, learning how to get comfortable with public speaking. Most people aren't. It's said to be the greatest fear that people have is uh, of public speaking. And so I'm able to help uh, people with that. And, and whatever it is, radio, television, broadcasting, podcasting, all of the different avenues and opportunities that are available now, uh, then I'm able to help people with that. So very great and very, very, very excited to, to be able to offer that now. Well, I'm glad to have you on the show because I think today is a perfect time for you to give people a little teaser because Uh you touched on the fear of public speaking. I can see that definitely for people who are about to be in the eye of the public because there used to be behind the scenes and now they might have an opportunity to have a platform. Why is it so important to have those skill sets, especially when you're about to be in that public spotlight? That's an excellent question. And so I've been thinking about it and and I kind of – I, I kind of say that everybody wants a piece of the pie. So in the, in this sense, the pie rep- represents prestige. The ability to speak, uh, it raises your prestige in the eyes of others. To be able to build your income, 
then then that is the that's the eye of pi, and then the extras that go along with it, whether it's the advancement in, at work or what have you. So, people, for the most part, you only get good at things that you practice, and people don't practice with regard to public speaking. And once you get into the habit of doing that, whatever it is, uh, then you are that much better and more capable of, uh, of producing something that you'll be happy with. Because let's face it, we're our own worst enemies. We're our own worst critics. And it doesn't yeah. matter what I do. Every time I hear myself, I cringe and think, did I really say that? <laughs> so the very first time in, in, your, uh, in your cubby over there, the very first time I ever did one of the shows, I forgot my first I forgot my name. The very first time I did, oh, wow. I, I did, this is, and I blanked out. I completely <laughs> forgot my name. So, you know, it takes time to overcome that. And so I have the, been able to do that on a weekly basis. I've always enjoyed speaking, um, but never actually been good at it. And so you actually, you have to train. And that's one of the main things is to get people past their fear and then for them to understand that when you're speaking, every single thing that you bring into that conversation, from the moment you walk through the door, people are sizing you up. You know, how tall are you? Whatever it is. You know, what are you wearing? What are your tattoos or not tattoos? Whatever it is. All of that's what you bring forward. And that's, that's the platform from which you speak. Now, when you, when you start to speak, then people are judging you by your dialect, by, your, uh, by the intelligence of the words that you choose, whether you speak down to them, which is a no-no, uh, whether you speak their language, they, you know, whether you have the credibility that comes from, you know, I can stand up, oh, I'm, a, I'm a PhD and I'm a scientist, and, I, you know, and, and then people go, so what? You know? yeah, what does that, yeah, what does that mean to me? You know, that, that sounds good from your perspective, but what does that mean to me? And so being able to be genuine with people, there, there's nothing that, that matches that. The, that genuine approach with people. And then, then they feel comfortable. You know, some people, again, some people come down, you know, they, they speak down to people, and that can be very detrimental. Some people, you know, they're, they're just very shy and they can't, you know, they don't, they, they're not able to, to get past that. And so you have to work through that. Uh, gestures are, are a big thing. And, you know, you have, I mean, I wish I had that baritone voice that you do, but sometimes you're you are so low true that, yeah yeah and so i've never had that problem <laughs> mom was a mom was a very feisty woman and she was very loud and so we all developed that loudness so i've never had that that same problem but when you have the microphone then you can't tell that you're speaking soft mm -hmm. but and then that's but that's part of your personality your persona exactly. how you go about things and so i mean it is you know, it's one of those things that makes you who you are and, and, and the credibility that goes with it. So I enjoy listening to you and, and hearing what you have to say because there's no doubt to me where you're, you know, where you're coming from is genuine and honest and sincere and that, the, you know, the I am refocused, you know, then, um, you know, that that's what it's all about. So once again, I'm talking to Riley Davidson, go check out his website real quick. That's BravoZuluRadio.com. Everything that you're trying to do, everything you're trying to be in life, you can't do it without God because he guides you as you're going through this journey in life. And what you touched on, the message, how important that message is because anyone can speak. When you get past that circle of people that you're comfortable with, that's when the, the dilemma hits. I'm going to hit you with this. The why. We hear that a lot where right. you're an entrepreneur or you're in your career. What is your why? Because right. that's the bigger picture that's bigger than you. Right. Touch on that for the audience because it's very important for someone who is trying to go to that next level in life. Mm -hmm to find out what is their why. Well, Bravo Zulu stands, is a military term and, and stands for a job well done. And when my mom was a registered nurse all my life, and I knew, I saw from our perspective as children, I saw the dedication that she gave to the community. She worked nonstop. She was constantly working 16-hour shifts, and, and she really gave a, a tremendous amount of herself. And I would always hear from people from the hospital, anytime that they would see us, they would tell me, you know, your mom is this tremendous lady, you know. And, you know, I, but I saw the toll that it took on her as well, the sacrifice that she actually made. So when we lost her in July of 2019, there were several things that happened with regard to, uh, with regard to my intention to do something you know, on, on a radio type of level. And 
I recognized all of a sudden, you know, I, I knew I wanted to highlight people like my mom, people that dedicate themselves to the community. And I received an email, and it was a Marine, and he on the bottom it said Bravo Zulu. Like, Bravo Zulu. You, know, you, you think of, you know, African tribes or whatever. And, and, uh, and I thought, but it's, it's uh, taken from the, uh, the uh, alphabet, the military alphabet, Bravo Zulu being two different, uh, two different uh, alphabet, uh, two different letters. Mm -hmm. And then in semaphore, there's flags that go along with it. And what they would do is they would raise those up on the ship when, the, when a ship was returning from battle. Then they would show that, you know, hey, good job, job well done. Mm -hmm. And so... I knew instantly when I saw that, that's what I wanted to name the program because that's what I wanted to do was highlight people like my mom that dedicated themselves to the community um, above and beyond themselves. So this is not something where you're giving 15 minutes of fame. I, I want to recognize what they've done for the, the Janet Henry, the, the Girl Scout leader who uh, teaches the, the kids in the homeless shelters or what have you. You know, these people that have gone, you know, uh, Cindy Simmons from the, the addiction standpoint that she just did the, the program. And she had a, a personal story that went into it. But that was that that was that driving force behind what she did. So so going into your, your question, how do we find that greater purpose? Well, so many of us we have, they say by the third generation, um, Americans become lazy. Once they've come over, then, you know, they, at the first generation, they're driven. They're, they just want to produce for their, for their offspring. And then the second generation starts to adopt the American attitudes. And by the third generation, they become lazy. And so on a, on a daily basis, then we get up and we, we do the same thing. We have the same coffee. We have the same breakfast. We go to the same work. We drive the same roads. Those of us that still, you know, drive to work mm -hmm. and then drive the same roads back and, and then put our feet up on the couch and, and, you know, and, and we do the same things and then watch the TV and the soapbox and the drivel that, you know, they pound into our heads that, yeah. that like, I, like, like I tell the kids, you know, that stuff's mind numbing. You know, it, it's not teaching you to, to, it's not teaching you to think, it's teaching you when to laugh because they're giving you that laugh track, yeah. you know. And so you become automated in, in a sense. And so, so many of us are like that. And it takes, it takes something to break you out of that uh, you know, that, that everyday routine, you know, routine. exactly, yeah. exactly. And so whether it's, you know, and unfortunately many times it's some type of a tragedy, a disaster or, or what have you, um, that shakes you. So That's what weird. people will do is they will take on what I've noticed is that whether it's cigarettes or bad habits, they will take on, they'll reach a low point in their lives and they'll reach out and they'll grab that crutch. And then that crutch, they keep with them, and it's, a, and, and it's able to help them to continue further. And then they reach another low point, and they grab another crutch. And sooner or later, you know, depending on what your personality is, whether you're driven to addiction, you know, or I don't mean driven, but um, some people are driven in terms of the stress and everything that comes into their lives, but because they don't have other, other outlets. But some people are more susceptible to substance abuse and, and that type of thing. We all gravitate towards crutches. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. it's unfortunate. And that, so I was asked on the Rockstar Radio uh, what, when, when I interview people that are in, in essence heroes for what they, what they contribute to the community, uh, he asked me, he said, well, we find that when we interview those types of people, they're very reticent. They don't want to come out. They don't want to highlight themselves. And I told him, I said, yes, I agree. But I, but I informed them that the greater they've now taken their message and given me the ability to broadcast it, then the greater their uh, their performance is going to be. And so, you know, that, that's what it boils down to is that all of a sudden, you know, hopefully it's not det so detrimental that, you know, it, it, it takes you out of um, the normal mainstream. And by that, I mean, mine was a motorcycle accident many years ago that made me realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, life is more than what I'm living it for. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully, you know, nobody gets to that level where they, they no longer want to contribute. But most of the time what I find is that there's something in someone's life that triggers that, hey, wait a minute. The wake you up know, call. Right. Well, look at, look at, and I laugh when I say it, but, um, you know, the billionaires, you look at uh, Gates and you look at uh, the, well, now the, the, the billionaires that are making it out into space and what have you. Mm -hmm. But with Gates, he made all of that money and then 
then you find out, well, maybe his personal life wasn't the way it should have been. You know, so he he uh, he sacrificed a lot of that along the way. But then all of a sudden, but even before that, they formed their foundation. And now, you know, now that we're in our, our, our late later end of life, now we're going to start giving back so that they build that legacy. Why not build that legacy as you're moving forward? You know, don't wait until you're. Things until are you're, perfect. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, not to cut in, but no, the, the, the interesting thing is like sometimes in life we get so comfortable. Right. And to that point, we feel like we don't need to give back until something bad happens. Right. It's like whether it's good or bad times. Right. If you find a way to give back, if it's just support your own family right. or if it's to support your own friends, like you can start local. You don't have to do something so grand and right. just huge right. scale. You oh. can start with just one choice of right. saying, I'm going to spend time with my parents. I'm going to spend time with my friends. I'm going to spend time with someone that can use what I have that's valuable. Right. And you have the opportunity to share it. And to the point, circling back to this, today's topic with speaking, public speaking, mm-hmm. that in itself is a gift because you have the opportunity to tell your story to people. And I like to say sometimes our pain is other people's medicine because if we survived oh, it, yeah. Yeah. that's our opportunity like that, yeah. to go and help someone who right. might be going through what you survived. Like for you, you survived an right, accident. Right. Now you can use that story to help someone else. Right. It may not be because they had an accident, but it could be because they're facing a challenge. Right. Well, you face one. And that's the key when you find your why, too, is what is the motivation? Because I heard you say the word drive. Like right. when you're driven to do something. Right. That means when hard times come, you still don't give up. It may be difficult, but you do not give up because you understand it's bigger than you. Right. Someone in your life might be depending on you to survive, sure. to, to be strong. And the There's key, if we are not feeling that we can be strong, do we know who the source is? Right. right. God is the one that gives us strength when we feel like we're going to give up. Touch on that because I know you, we all been through sometimes in our lives where we wanted to give up. But, you know, if we depend on God, that's the source that keeps us surviving. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. So I feel for people that don't recognize, that are agnostic, that don't believe that, uh, that God exists, or that um, um, uh, eight or atheists don't believe that God exists. Agnostic means that they don't know. They just simply they go about life you know, without knowing one way or another. So to think for one second that we were put here, or that, that we came out of some primordial ooze that there was a big bang and nothing nothing was planned or these are these are concepts the thinking mind has to throw out because to think that there's not as churchill said a greater plan being worked out below and to think that you're going about each and every single day only to live out your life and then end it and then there's nothing there's nothing past that what that's why so many people don't have a why, because our educational system using the, the rational, um, you know, the, what that comes from the rational uh, teaching, the, we've, we've taken God out of the picture. And so even those people that, that do, you know, profess a belief in God, because the majority of people uh, in America profess to be Christian. However, the... The, the practicing number of them is far fewer. And then the people that, that you embrace when you're driving down the road, you know, that, that Christian is probably the one that just flipped you off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's, you know yeah. there's, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of levels to it. And a lot know? of flaws. And yeah. what well, I'm hearing from you is, is, is most people who are humble enough to admit is we all have flaws. Right. But what I'm also hearing is, the one who makes it better is God himself. Because when you take your broken pieces, if I can put it that way, mm-hmm. and say, all right, God, I need you. I need this personal relationship. I need to get corrected. I need to refocus. All right. And I need to put my life in the right path now. I need you. Right. That's almost sound like surrendering, too, because a lot of us have pride. And we all have pride. And, and anyone that doesn't recognize that, then they're they're farther off than they thought they were. That's right. That's that's the human condition, and the until you, you know, um, until you package it all up and give it and give it to him, then 
you know, what, what can we create in and of ourselves? We're mortal. Um, we are in, in created that way uh, so that we would cease without uh, a greater involvement in the, in the creator. And until we give it to him and let him handle it, then it w- nothing that we can create is capable of, of lasting. Um, it's not nothing that we do is internal. It, can, it can't be. Um, there's even uh, the, the saying where they, they uh, speaking of men, where they, they name lands after themselves. It's like, you yeah. know, as if you're going to be around forever, you know, that, 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 that anybody would know. So to think that we can create anything in and of ourselves that, that's meaningful, that's, that's flawed. It's flawed thinking. It has to be something that we have, um, you know, that we've dedicated, like you said, to a higher power than, our, than ourselves. And it's not until you recognize, I, I think, that you recognize that your own mortality, that you come to that understanding that, okay, wait a minute, I don't want, it's, it's, like, the, it's like the 80-year-old that finally buys the Corvette. I'm not going to wait right. until I'm 80 to buy, I, not that I'm going to buy a Corvette, but, yeah. um, but now is the time to build your legacy and for your children and for the the community and what have you not not when you're you've got the billion dollars in each when everything is quote unquote yeah. almost perfect right. because even when you get that car that you always wanted <laughs> I'm not, and disclaimer I'm not saying there's not anything wrong with getting the car you want but I'm right. just saying like you were saying if you make your whole life purpose just to get a car right. at a certain age right. you're living a shallow life because sure. there's way more to life than just buying a car or just buying right. whatever you fill right. in the blank but if, if people don't recognize that there's something on the other end of mortality, then why? Then then there's no other reason to live to live a hedonistic life. In other words, to live a lifestyle that the sole purpose of which is for yourself and for your own gratitude okay. and and for your own um, uh, your own you know uh, your own advantage, like your yeah. your own yeah. way of being like satisfied. Because it's kind of like the mindset where. There's nothing in this world that can give you what God can give you. Right. You can have a grocery list of everything you want to accomplish. There's nothing wrong writing down lists and goals. But my point is, if all those goals, to your point, if it's only to benefit me, right. if it's only to benefit me for my whole life, right. then I'm not living. No. Because no. even circling back when we talked about earlier in the show about public speaking and having that platform, if it's only for yourself, if it's not for the listener, if it's not for someone who's right. driving by listening to the show right now or someone who listening to the podcast, if it's not to help them get picked up right. and feel like, hey, right. they can do it too. Absolutely. Because that's the motivation. Right. Every day you get a chance to refocus is because you do. You do have a chance to refocus. Right. Because right. there's things in life that are distractions. Right. But that's okay. You just right. don't stay that way. Right. That's the difference. So Bohemian Rhapsody, that's what I was thinking. So a Bohemian lifestyle, that's where it's lived for yourself, right? Um, I, I go back to the fact that on, uh, on February the 12th, 1983, I was in a motorcycle accident. I was, I was broken. I was bleeding. I lost, um, I lost half of the blood in my body. And if somebody hadn't taken the time to, when they saw my motorcycle in the middle of the street, say, hey, wait a minute, I'll bet there was a human being that was involved in that, with, you know, that was riding that motorcycle, and they actually went and looked for me, then I wouldn't be here. You know? So that's kind of where, now it took me, you know, that's PTSD all over again. And it wasn't until I interviewed uh, the gentleman from the PTSD Foundation that I recognized, hey, wait a minute, that is, in fact, what I went through. And so it took me a long time to get past that. I, I had to learn a lot of things. And then when I finally did, and then so that, that's what made me recognize, okay, now I know things that, that I can share that can make other people better people. And so that, that is the driving force behind what I do. It's almost a drop mic moment when I'm just going to say bravo Zulu. Because if you try to make life too complicated, I think you get lost. Oh, yeah. But if you keep it simple. So easy in today's world. Absolutely. If you just keep life simple and say, hey, God, man, I'm here. Show me the plans. You know, because Jeremiah 29, 11, he basically says, I know the plans I have for you. Right. They're plans not to harm you. Right. But they are plans to give you hope in the future. Right. Without what you said, you know, without that that belief in the the afterlife and 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 the promises that that we've been given, without that, there's no hope. That's what you were talking about being created in vanity, and in, in other words, vanity being hopelessness. You know, they uh, that's what mortality is. If if, if we, we can't get past the mortality, then we can't reach where we're supposed to be. 
And before we let you go, I'm going to let you have the honors. What would you like to tell the audience, first of all, how they can listen to your show, Bravo Zulu, okay. and what would you like to give a message to the audience? All right. So uh, you can go to the website, bravozuluradio.com, and uh, you can download the podcast from there. It goes out. Uh, it's 9.30 a.m. The Answer and KLUP in San Antonio. And it goes out 10 p.m. It's all I can afford. 10 p.m. Saturday night, and um, and then like I said, it goes out broadcast in all you know all of the uh, the main places, and then always you can pick it up at uh, bravozuliradio.com. Uh, you can call me direct 210-316-9421. That's 210-316-9421. Whether it be you have somebody that you want to highlight or. Uh, you are a company that wants to give a sponsorship or it's something that you, you've now made the decision that you want to move on with your public speaking, you know, dare I say career, uh, because that's what it could be, uh, then by all means, give me a, a contact me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you having me on the show. The show I have. Once again, true honor to talk to Riley Davidson. Go to his website. That is bravozuluradio.com. Again, that's bravozuluradio.com. And like we say on every single show, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. But don't sign off yet. I'm going to say what Riley said. Bravo Zulu. Mm-hmm.